Well, hello there. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Hey, hey, here we go with the beginning of chapter three. This is the straight line chapter. And what I thought we would do, rather than just jump into National Five straight line, we would go back and this would be a recap of everything we should already know with regards to straight lines. So this is revision from National Four. So we already know the equation of a straight line. Say it with me. The equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. Woo! High five for getting that. But do you know each part? What does each part represent? Well, the m shows the gradient. Perfect. It does show the gradient. What is meant by the gradient, Daniel? Perfect. It is the steepness of the line. Good. And the C, what does C show you? Perfect. It shows the y-intercept, which is where the graph crosses your y-axis. I will go through each part, the gradient and the y-intercept, and explain each of them in a little more detail. So, the gradient, as Daniel said, is a measure of the steepness of a line. And in National 4, we learned that the way to measure the gradient is by taking the vertical distance and dividing that by the horizontal distance. So, for this first example here, write the gradient of this hill as both a fraction and a decimal. So, you can see that this little dude on the bike is cycling uphill. And because he's cycling up a hill, well, there's a steepness to that hill. And the steepness is known as the gradient. On that hill, you can see we have this point here at the top and we have this point here at the bottom. And what has happened is a right angle triangle has been drawn. So, just coming straight down vertically, we have come down to the same height as the start of the hill here, if you come along this horizontal distance. So, the way you measure the gradient is by dividing the vertical distance by the horizontal. The way I remember which one is which, well, V for vertical, if you start off drawing a V, well, you would go down and up. And down and up is your vertical distance, so that there would be six. And we're dividing that by the horizontal distance. For the horizontal, think of the word horizon. The horizon, imagine if you're in a boat at sea, you look out to the horizon, it's that straight line, the flat line in the distance. So the horizontal distance, the straight flat line there would be 20. So we do 6 divided by 20. If you work that out, I'm sure you could do it without a calculator. What does it give you, Mark? 0 0.3. Well done, Mark. It is 0 0.3. That is going to be the gradient then of that hill as both a fraction and a decimal. It's also worth noting as well that the bigger the answer we get, the bigger the number, the bigger the gradient, well, it means the steeper the hill or the steeper the gradient. That is the basics for gradient. After that, in National 4, what we then went on to do was to look at what happens when you get a coordinate diagram, also known as a Cartesian diagram. Ooh. So something like this here. You've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis, and you've got these different numbers here, which you can use for different coordinates. So when a line slopes up from left to right, so if you have something like that, what do you say about the gradient, Olivia? That's positive. Perfect. The gradient is positive. The gradient will be bigger than zero. So if a line on a coordinate diagram slopes up from left to right, the gradient is positive. If it were the other way around, so if the line sloped down from left to right, so if you had something like this, what would you then say about the gradient of that line? It would be negative. Thank you, Mark. It would be negative. So the gradient would be less than zero. So, positive gradient is going to be a line that's going up from left to right, and a negative gradient will be going down from left to right. Looking at this example, example two, write down the gradient of this line AB. So, going from A to B. You can see the line is drawn in here, and if we imagine this line looking at it from left to right, would it be going downhill or uphill? Yes, it's obvious. It's going down. So, since the line slopes down, from left to right, the gradient will be negative. So if you're ever looking at a line in a coordinate diagram from left to right, if it's going down, you know the gradient's going to be negative. So you can say here the gradient will be, it's still going to be the vertical over the horizontal, but you can see it's going to be a negative. So we've got negative, whatever the vertical over horizontal is. 
For this, we've got these two points. The straight line has been drawn. We know it's the vertical over horizontal, so what you need to do is draw in your right angled triangle. If you draw in your right angled triangle here, you can see you are coming down one, two, three boxes, or in other words, three units. Your vertical distance will be three, and you want to divide that by the horizontal distance. And your horizontal distance, you're coming along one, two, three, four, five boxes, or five units. So it'll be negative three over five. And if you work that out as a decimal, was three divided by five? 0 0.6. Perfect. So you'd have negative 0 0.6. That would be the gradient of that line. And again, the gradient means it slopes down from left to right. It does indeed. Well done. Imagine we had to work out the gradient of this red line. So this time it's very similar to the last example, but we are not given the points A and B. We're not given any of the coordinates. If this is the case, what we have to do is just find a couple of coordinates ourselves. So we can see that the line is going to be going up here. And all we want to do is looking at these lines in the coordinate diagram, you can see where they cross. So they'll cross there, they'll cross there, they'll cross there and so on. Just try to find where that red line goes through some of these points where your horizontal and vertical lines cross. So the first one that's jumping out at me is this one here. You can see that the red line goes through that point there and that point there, we're going along three, we're going up two, so that'll be the point three, two. Another point, can anybody see Mary Lou? Perfect, well done. You've also got the point five, five. So you can see at that point five, five, the red line is going through there. So we need a couple of points to start off with and you can choose any two points you want, but try to make it easy. Try to make it a couple of points that the red line is going through. Don't do something like four and then three and a half. That'll just get confusing. Try to stick with whole numbers. So I've chosen the three, two and five, five. First of all, when I'm looking at this, it's on a coordinate diagram, so I have to consider is the gradient positive or is it negative? Ellie, what would you say about this one? Positive or negative? Positive. Why would you say it's positive? Because it's going up. Perfect. From left to right, the line is going up the way. And because it's going up, it's going to be a positive gradient. So, working it out, the gradient, it is the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. Again, from these two points I've chosen, let's just draw in a right angled triangle. Vertical, if you write a V, you write it down and up. So the line that goes down and up is the vertical distance. And that there is going down one, two, three boxes. So the vertical distance will be three. Horizontal distance, the horizontal distance is how far you're coming along in the flat and going along two boxes or two units. So it's three over two. And if you divide three by two, you will obviously get one and a half or 1.5. So that there will be the gradient of that line. In case anybody is wondering, could you have chosen another couple of points? Well, yes, you could. I mean, you can see here that the line is also going through this point here at one, negative one. If you drew in a triangle here, well, even though the numbers would be larger, if you did it in that case, the vertical over horizontal distance, we'd well, have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes or six units. And then you would divide that by the horizontal distance, which would be one, two, three, four. So that'd be six over four, which would then simplify to the three over two. And if you divide them, you get the 1.5. So it doesn't matter which two points you are choosing. You can choose this one and the one up here. You can choose this one and this one the way I did, or you can just choose these two. It makes no difference. It's the same line, it's the same gradient. It's always going to be the same answer. So that is what we learned about the gradient in National 4. And we also learned a bit about, what's the other bit? The y-intercept. Perfect. Which part shows you the y-intercept? Is it the number that's going to be in front of x, or is it the number that's on its own? On its own! Brilliant. C shows you the y-intercept. What does M show you though? Gradient! Perfect. It's the gradient or the steepness of the line. So for the y-intercept, what I mean by that is where your line crosses your y-axis. So if you look at these three examples here with this first example, we've got our x-axis, we've got our y-axis, and you can see that our red line that is drawn in is passing through at this point four. We know if we were writing that as a coordinate, well, that would be the point zero, four, because we're coming along zero in the X and we're just going up four units. So because that is passing through zero, four, because you can see that they're going through at four, you can say that the Y-intercept C will be, you got it, it's gonna be four, brilliant. 
With this middle example again, you've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis drawn in. You can see that this red line is going through at 0, negative 11. Because it's going through at 0, negative 11, you know you're not moving along in the x, you're going along 0, and you're just going straight down to negative 11. So that is the point that it is crossing your y-axis. Because of that, your y-intercept will be... Brilliant, that will just be negative 11. Woo, you're so good at this. And the last example, again, there's the x-axis, there is the y-axis, you can see that it's going through where they meet, and that is also known as the origin. And the origin will have the coordinates zero, zero. Good, zero, zero. So the x-coordinate will be zero, you're not moving along at all, and the y-coordinate, you're not moving up or down, it is also zero. And because it's zero, zero, it means that the y-intercept, or c, will be just zero. You're not going through at one or two or three or negative one, negative two, you're just going through at zero. And that will be your answer. Once again, very quick recap to test a few people. The gradient of this line, is it positive or negative? Good, the gradient is positive. The line is sloping up from left to right. This line here, is it a positive or negative gradient? Brilliant, it's a positive gradient because the line again is sloping up from left to right. And this one here, positive or negative gradient, what do you think? Are you sure? Well done, it is a negative gradient from left to right. The line slopes down the way. Just throwing that in there. So, if we are given the equation of a line in the form y equals mx plus c, we can read off both the gradient woo, and the y-intercept. woo. So, for the fourth example, let's state both the gradient and the y-intercept of these six lines. So, we have y equals 8x take away 7. First of all, what is the gradient going to be? Well, the gradient is going to be represented by m, and m is really what's in front of x in y equals mx plus c. So, Samir, what would it be here? Perfect, it's just going to be 8 because it's 8x. Take the number in front of x, and that shows you the gradient. So, hey, what would the y-intercept be? Perfect, the y-intercept is just the number that's on its own. And here you've got this takeaway 7. So, that is your y-intercept. With the next one, again, you want to state both the gradient and the y-intercept. So we've got y equals 0.2x plus 5. Cameron, what would the gradient be? Perfect, the gradient is just going to be 0.2. It's the number that's in front of x. That is going to be the steepness of that line. And the y-intercept, Leah, what would you have for the y-intercept? Perfect, it would just be 5. It's the number that's on its own. Well done, you two. <claps> Woo! With c, y equals 11 take away x. Once again, we want the gradient and the y-intercept. So, Tyler, the gradient of this line, what do you think? You're saying negative 1, you're not saying 11. Why not 11? Perfect, it is not the number that um, x is being multiplied by. You can see here, x on its own just means 1x. And because you're taking away x, well, it means negative 1x. So the gradient will be negative 1. Well done, Tyler. And to mass, what is the y-intercept? Perfect, the y-intercept is just the number that's on its own, and the number on its own is 11. So that there will be your y-intercept. Well done. With d, 4 plus root 5x equals y, well, this time all I've done is instead of writing y equals, I could just have written y equals the 4 plus root 5x and moved the y equals to the other side. It makes no difference. Really, you've got the 4 plus root 5x. Again, you need to state both the gradient and the y-intercept. What would you have, Faith, for the gradient? What would m be? Brilliant, it would just be root 5. That is what you're multiplying x by. You're multiplying it by root 5, so that is your gradient. And the y-intercept, what do you think for that, Sanjita? Perfect, that's just going to be 4. Well done. Woo! Yeah. For e, we've got y equals 2 fifths x. What would you have for that one? Zian, what's the gradient going to be? Good. What are you multiplying x by? Well, you're multiplying x by two fifths. Therefore, the gradient is just two fifths. Make sure whenever you write the gradient, don't write an x beside it. It's just the number you're multiplying x by. And what would the y-intercept be? What do you think, magic? Y zero. Perfect, you're not adding anything on. You could just easily write that as 2 fifths x, add 0. You can see there's absolutely nothing there, so the number on its own is just 0. Well done, magic. And for the last one, for f, we've got y equals negative 3. With this one here, Arij, what do you think? What is the gradient? 
Well, how many X's do you have? Brilliant, you've got zero X's. So the gradient is just going to be zero. It's really the number of X's you have. And for C, the Y intercept, that's the number that's on its own. And the number that's on its own here is the negative three. So that there is your Y intercept. Woo, well done. Let's try and go back the way then. Let's try and reverse that. So this time I will give you the gradient and the Y intercept. Woo! And let's see if you can come up with the equation of that straight line. So let's say the gradient is four and the Y intercept is nine. You want to write that in the form of Y equals MX plus C. Remember Y equals MX plus C is the equation, the general equation of your straight line. So Y equals MX plus C, just trying to write that with the mouse. Y equals MX plus C, you want to write it in that form. So all you're doing is replacing the M with four. So you'd have Y equals four X. And then instead of plus C, well, if C was nine, it would just become plus nine. That there will be your equation. Again, all you want to do is swap the M with whatever it is and the C with whatever it is. Just pay close attention to any negatives. So for example, here we've got M equals negative six. Therefore, we will have Y equals negative six X. Again, we're replacing the M with negative six, so negative six X. And plus C on the end will be plus a half. Perfect, it's just gonna be plus a half because that is what your Y intercept is. Well done. With C, M is 12. So if we replace the M with 12, we would have Y equals 12 X. And for plus C, what are you adding on the end? Well, there is no Y intercept as mentioned. So really, you could always imagine that C equals zero. There's absolutely nothing there. So you don't need to bother writing that. People that do maths are very, very lazy. Don't write plus zero. There's absolutely nothing there to write. With D, you've got M equals 0 0.7 and C is negative five. Again, in your general equation, Y equals MX plus C. If you replace M with 0 0.7, you would have Y equals 0 0.7 X. And for plus C, what's the Y intercept? Negative five. So in the end, you'll have negative five. Well done. And with the last one for E, we've got C equals negative root seven. So there is no mention of the gradient here. So if there's no mention of the gradient, what do you imagine the gradient to be? Zero. Brilliant, you just imagine that as zero. Therefore, this shows you what X is multiplied by. And if you multiply X by zero, you will get zero. Woo! Which means you don't need to write it. So you would just have Y equals, would have zero X. Don't bother writing that. But what's the Y intercept? Negative root seven. So you just write negative root seven. Dun, dun, dun. Did you do well with that? Yeah. Next one, a couple of special cases. So imagine you have parallel lines. And what I mean by parallel lines is just imagine something like train tracks. Train tracks are not gonna get any closer together the further down the line you go. They're also not going to get further apart. That would be a disaster. Train tracks are the exact same distance apart no matter whereabouts you are on the line. So if you see these lines here, no matter whereabouts you are, well, that there is gonna be the same distance as that there, the same distance as that, same distance as that, same distance as that, same distance as that. So same with these ones, that there will be the exact same distance as that, that'll be the same distance, that'll be the same distance. You can see they're just the exact same distance apart. They're not getting closer together, they're not getting further apart. What could you say then about parallel lines if you think about the gradient? What could you say about the gradient of each of those lines? Remember, the gradient is a measure of the steepness. Yeah, you can say it's the exact same steepness for each one. And because it's the same steepness, well, it means they're going to have the exact same gradient. So, something about parallel lines is that they have the exact same gradient. Woo! Let's look at this example. So example six, write down the equation of the line that passes through the point zero seven and is parallel to the line y equals four x take away three. So the first thing we need to know is if we are wanting to write down the equation of a line that passes through that point and is parallel to that, well, you know the equation is going to always be of the form y equals mx plus c. Remember, that's the general equation of your straight line. 
What you need to know are two things. You need to know what the gradient of that line is, so you can write y equals whatever x, and you need to know what the plus or minus on the end will be. You need to know your y-intercept. So when it says here, write down the equation of line that passes through 0, 7, well, if you imagine that on an x and a y-axis, 0, 7 would be going along 0 and just up 7. So if you're going along 0 and up 7, well, you know then that will be your y-intercept. So the 0, 7 is the y-intercept, which means then that C on this line that we're wanting will just be 7. We are also told, though, that it's parallel to y equals 4x take away 3. And if the line is parallel, well, two parallel lines will have the same gradient. So for that line there, the y equals 4x take away 3, we need to think what's the gradient of that line. And the gradient, Tab, will be what? 4! Well said, Tab. How do you know it's that? Brilliant, because that is what you're multiplying x by. You've got 4x, so the gradient will be 4. Which means then the equation of the line that passes through the point and is parallel to that will have a gradient of 4, and it will have a y-intercept of 7. So if you take y equals mx plus c, and you replace the m with 4, and the c with 7, it will give you an answer of... Bum, 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 y equals 4x plus 7. Yeah! Another special case. Let's say we're just looking at horizontal lines. Oh yeah! If you imagine a horizontal line then, look at something like this. You can see this horizontal line, it is parallel to your x-axis, it is perfectly flat. Again, if you're out in a boat at sea and you look away off into the distance, you will see the horizon, it's the line that is perfectly flat in the distance. Horizontal lines, if you think about the gradient, well remember way back at the start of this video we were saying that you measure the gradient by dividing the vertical distance by the horizontal distance. If you think about the horizontal distance of a line, so say you took a couple of points on that line, and if you drew in your triangle, well you can't really do it. And you can't do it is because you've got a vertical distance of zero. You're not coming down at all in order to get to that point. Normally what you'd have is a line drawn in, you would come down, you would go along, and that would be your two points. But here you can see for this one, there is no vertical distance. So you will have zero divided by some number, whatever that horizontal distance will be. But because you're dividing zero by some number, well, imagine you've got zero suites, split them between five people, they would all get zero. So horizontal lines have a gradient of just zero. However, you do have, still have to state the equation of a horizontal line. And if the gradient is going to be zero, well, if you imagine your y equals mx plus c, m is zero, so it's zero x. If there's zero x, don't bother writing it. So all you'll be left with is just y equals c. That will be the equation of your horizontal line. y equals c, where c is your y-intercept. Let's look at these two examples. So write down the equation of each horizontal line. You can see for this one, there's your x-axis, there's your y-axis. This horizontal line is passing through this point here at 6. You could imagine that point as 0, 6. Because you can see you're going along 0 and you're going up 6. And because of that, that there is your y-intercept, which you can clearly see anyway without thinking about it as 0, 6. Because that's your y-intercept, because it's a horizontal line, the equation will just be y equals 6. You got it. Well done, Douglas. It is just y equals 6. With this example here, we've got the x-axis, we've got the y-axis, and we can see the line is going through the point 0, negative 2. Because it's crossing over at 0, negative 2, well, the 0 means you haven't come along from your x-axis, you're just going straight down to negative 2. And because it's crossing your y-axis at negative 2, it means then the equation will just be y equals negative 2. Woo! Let's flip this about then. Let's move on to look at a vertical line. Yeah, this is a day I've been waiting for. So, a vertical line, you know a vertical line, if you start writing the word vertical, starts with a V which goes down and up. Remember your vertical line goes down and up. It is the line going straight up and down. If you try to get the gradient of a vertical line, once again, it will be the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. Take a couple of points on that line. Well, 
putting in your number. If you imagine the vertical distance from here to here, well, that will be whatever it works out to be. That will be some number. If you divide that by the horizontal distance, well, because one point is directly above the other, you will not be coming along at all. You cannot draw your triangle. Again, if you have the gradient of a line, something like that, normally you've got a line that goes straight up and down. You've got a line that goes along, so you can easily get the vertical and the horizontal distance. But here you're not coming along. You cannot draw in that triangle. So the horizontal distance is just zero. If you have some number and you divide it by zero, what do you end up getting? No, you don't get zero. Try it on your calculator. If you divide by zero, it will bring up error. You cannot divide by zero. It's impossible to do. If you try it, it breaks the world. Lots of question marks. Really what you say is that vertical lines have an undefined gradient. And the reason is because you're trying to divide by zero. You can't divide something by zero. It makes no sense. However, once again, you do still have to come up with the equation of a vertical line. And for a vertical line, well, the way of doing it is, let's imagine this point here as five, zero. Let's just make that up. Okay, let's say that's five, zero. Let's say this point here is just above that at five, one. Let's say the point above that's directly above, so we're still going along five, but we'd be going up something else, let's say five, two. Well, you notice about every single one of these points on our vertical line, well, we're always going to be going along five, and then we go up one, then we go up two, then we go up three, then four, or we come down to negative one, negative two, but it's always going to be five, negative one, or five, negative two, or five, negative three. Really, the five will always stay the same. And because this x value always stays the same, the equation is just x equals some number. And that number, which I'm representing by A, is just where the line crosses your x-axis. Let's look at a couple of examples then. So with example eight, write down the equation of each vertical line. You can see here you've got your x-axis and you've got your y-axis. With this point here, well this point is where this line, this vertical line that goes straight up and down crosses your x-axis. And because it's crossing at five zero, the equation is just going to be x equals five. Remember the equation of a vertical line is just going to be x equals a number. And if we take another example, so with this one here, again, there's our x-axis and our y-axis drawn in. We can see here we've got a vertical line. Woo! And this vertical line is crossing at this point here, negative 7. You can see here this is going to be negative 7, 0, if you wrote it down with an x and a y coordinate, because you're not going to be going up at all. Because it's a vertical line, we know the equation is just going to be x equals. And the reason is, again, because every single point on this line will be negative 7 something. It'll be negative 7, 1, then negative 7, 2, negative 7, 3, negative 7, 4, negative 7, negative 1, negative 7, negative 2, negative 7, negative 3. The x value is always negative 7, so we just say x equals negative 7. Woo! And that's your answer. That is a recap then of everything that you should already know from Gradient, from National 4 and before. Give these questions a shot, though. Make sure you're 100% okay with these before you move on to the next lesson, which will start with some of the National 5 straight line work. Best of luck. Have fun. Any questions, give me a shout. Look at the TJ book, page 50 to 53, exercise 6.1, 6.2, blah, blah, blah. Have fun. See ya. So long.